When Lowry Markkinen was drafted by the Minnesota Timberwolves in 2017 and was subsequently traded to the Chicago Bulls in a package deal for Jimmy Butler, the thought was that Markkinen was going to be the new franchise cornerstone of Chicago in their rebuild. And while Lowry had a great rookie season securing all rookie first team honors and improving even further in his sophomore season to the point where you thought this guy legitimately looked like a future multiple time all-star in the making, and then something happened as he made his way into the third season, where he regressed as a player, and that continued further going into the following season, and when the Chicago Bulls made the trade for Nikola Vucevic at the trade deadline in 2021, it was becoming clear that the new front office didn't see Markkinen being a part of the Bulls' long-term plans, and decided to let him go by way of a sign-in trade to the Cleveland Cavaliers. And despite getting a decent contract for his level of production anyway, Markkinen's numbers continued to drop off in his lone season with the Cavs. And by this point, Everyone was thinking, Markkinen probably just isn't that guy. He's not that type of guy you build a franchise around and more of a role player who can give you some offense. That is until the Cavs moved him in a trade for Donovan Mitchell, among a number of other pieces, to the Utah Jazz, and suddenly, Lowry Markkinen broke out into the player Bulls fans were hoping he would be playing the best basketball of his career and poised to be a first-time All-Star. So what happened that enabled Markkinen to completely turn his career around and dominate to becoming one of the best big men in the NBA? Well, that's what we'll be talking about in this video. If you're new to the channel and you enjoy the content, feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video. We just passed 9,000 subscribers and I'll be doing a giveaway once the channel reaches 10K. So make sure you're subscribed to be included in that giveaway. This time we'll be giving away two jerseys to two winners who are subscribed to the channel. But anyway, let's get back into the topic at hand. So Lowry Markkinen, like a lot of international prospects, came to the US to play college basketball for his one year removed high school to be eligible for the NBA draft. Markkinen started making headlines when he became one of the best Finnish players at just the age of 17, playing for the junior national team and a year later for the senior national team leading them to the round of 16. And at this point, scouts knew that Markkinen was going to be a future NBA player with his skill set, his size, ability to shoot the ball from outside, but also post up in the paint, crash the boards and block shots, a gifted player that would be valuable in the modern day NBA that is predicated on three point shooting. Markkinen goes to the University of Arizona to play his only season of college basketball before declaring for the draft. And as I mentioned, gets selected seventh overall by the Chicago Bulls. Now, as I stated at the top of the video, Markkinen's game had fallen off a bit going into his third season, which is odd as a lot of players, NBA players start breaking out in their third year. It's around this time, players start becoming more familiar and comfortable with the speed and flow of NBA games, as well as managing the grind of a long NBA season. And while sure, you do have cases where some players really excel in their first couple of seasons and then have a dramatic fall off thereafter, it's very rare to see that and then suddenly you see a resurgence to where they were even better than they were before. And for Larry Markkinen, it was all about culture and fit that impacted his game. You see, going into his third season, the Bulls had made the decision to hire then interim coach Jim Boylan after firing Fred Hoiberg, who, if you're unfamiliar with Jim Boylan, as I would suspect most of you are who aren't Bulls fans, was an absolute disaster of a coach, a patronizing egotistical maniac who was horrible at developing players and building relationships with his players. He was okay when it came to the X's and O's and understanding the game of basketball, but completely failed to realize that garnering respect from your players was of the utmost importance. And as such, Markkinen's development fell by the wayside. He was being used in odd ways, poor rotations and roster configurations that didn't utilize his strengths and what he could do best. It also didn't help that he had some injuries that kept him in and out of the lineup that year. And if I'm going to be honest, having a very ball dominant, heavy volume score on the roster like Zach Levine, for which Boylan's entire offense was run around, also didn't do him any favors. Going into the following season, Markkinen, as well as the entire Bulls fan base, was given the gift of a new front office after the previous front office had been running the franchise into the ground. And Jim Boylan was also fired as the head coach and will likely never coach in the NBA again. But despite a new front office, a new coach, one that was actually great at building relationships with his players and overall player development, Billy Donovan, there was still something about Markkinen's game that was off. He wasn't being as aggressive as we had seen in the first two seasons. He wasn't as agile and mobile in his ability to get to the basket. And despite his overall efficiency improving from a shooting standpoint, his lack of defense and level of energy and impacting play on the court saw him less playing time and was eventually moved to the bench after the Bulls made the trade for Vucevic as you really can't have two bigs who do similar things on offense, but both can't play defense. And given Vucevic at the time anyway, was clearly the better player, a better scorer, a better rebounder, better passer, Donovan made the decision to have Lowry come off the bench, which really set Markkinen back, getting him the fewest touches and usage of his career, career lows in most statistical categories, and it was clear Markkinen was unhappy, didn't fit the roster anymore with the direction they were moving in, especially after also drafting another power forward and Patrick Williams, who had been playing small forward in his rookie season with Markkinen in the starting lineup at the four. And then once Markkinen was ultimately traded to the Cavs, 
his game didn't improve much, if at all. He was able to get his starting role back, but his overall efficiency started dipping again, his outside shot regressed, and again, the fit, the fit on the Cavs roster wasn't conducive to his skill set. A lot of other big men on that roster, Evan Mobley, Jared Allen, Kevin Love, Markkinen was getting the start at the three for a seven-footer, and of course it didn't help that yet again, you had a ball-dominant, high-scoring guard like Darius Garland, although don't get me wrong, Garland is actually a fantastic playmaker, but he's a ball-dominant guard, and while Markkinen can play off the ball, He's still effective in that style of play, but he's also really good at playing on the ball and creating his own shot. He's not a good playmaker by any stretch of the imagination, but he can go one-on-one -on, -one on other bigs. And with his size and length, getting those higher king shots over defenders, and he's very skilled at putting the ball on the ground and driving to the hoop for a hard dunk, which we've seen him do so many times on posters that he's put on people already this season. So Larry Markkinen, after most people were down and out on the guy, gets traded as an afterthought in the Donovan Mitchell trade, which sent Colin Sexton, Ochai Obagi, and three first-round picks to the Jazz, which don't get me wrong, has worked out for Cleveland that Mitchell has been balling for them and the Cavs are one of the better teams in the Eastern Conference, but that was quite the haul for Donovan Mitchell, especially when you consider now how well Markkanen has been playing, looking like a completely different player from what we saw in the last few seasons, scoring at an elite level, one of the most efficient players in the league, and he's actually playing decent defense. How is it that a player who went from putting up 14.8 points per game on 44% shooting, 35% from three, and 5.7 rebounds to now, just one season later, putting up near 25 points per game on insane efficiency, 52% from the field on 16 attempts per game, and 42% from three on over seven attempts, which is one of the best in the league, by the way. Crashing the board, snagging 8.7 rebounds a game, putting up a career high in offensive rebounds per game, also putting up career highs in assists and blocks. It is so rare to see a player make that type of leap We've seen players take big jumps from season to season, as we've seen from a lot of past Most Improved Player of the Year award winners, but not to the level where they go from effectively being a role player, for all intents and purposes salary filler in a blockbuster trade, to go from that to being an all-star, one of the better players in the league in terms of their overall efficiency and on-court, off-court numbers. You simply don't see that in the NBA. So how did it happen? Again, all about fit, role, and a team and coaching staff that maximizes your skills and gives you the green light to do what you do best and believing in that player to get the job done. As much as it pains me to say it, the Bulls, as an organization, they didn't do that. They failed marketing and setting them up for success. Sure, some of it was on marketing for maybe not being aggressive enough or vocal enough to demand the ball or the coaching staff and front office No, he felt his role wasn't being used to his strengths. And the same goes for the Cavs, but the Jazz, for a team that was expected to be one of the worst in the league, and the tank for Wimbayama sweepstakes has become a young, feisty, and competitive team that is being led by the finisher on Lowry Marketing. As their go-to player, as their first option on scoring, they trust in him, they believe in him, and it also helps to have a very veteran-savvy point guard who has been one of the better point guards in the league for a while. Who knows how to get the most out of a scoring big, which Markkinen really has never had throughout his entire NBA career. And while it may be some time before the Jazz truly start competing and being a contender to really see Markkinen if he can actually be that franchise level player, that number one option on the title contending team. But for now, the Jazz have a very bright future, considering all the draft capital they have over the next five to six years that they acquired from the Wolves and the Cavs, and in Lowry Markkinen coming into his own, in his prime, being that all-star to kickstart the rebuild. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.